with WWE pushing for a return and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Touching on her call up to the main roster, Zoe Stark said on Believe in Pro Wrestling, I feel like I am one of the top performers that can really be in WWE. I felt amazing and it was a very tearful and enjoyable night. Triple H put me in this position because he knows I can handle it and hang with those two girls and I think I am proving myself right now. Recalling his storyline with Mandy Rose from 2020, Dolph Ziggler told Sam Roberts, I hate, I effing hate that I had one singles match in 18 years and it was on a soundproof stage with no fans. And here's why I hate it. I don't hate it because I got one ever and there was nobody there. That's hilarious. That's a great rib. I am heartbroken that this beautiful story of this kick-ass lady and this badass guy that you're rooting for and this ass 80s bad guy with his collar popped, it's my whole life. I'm finally on TV. I finally get it and we invest so much time and we have like not the matches, not the stuff that you guys see is important. The behind the scenes things were Sonya and I had this weird chemistry right off the bat where we seem like these Bond villains. This is the most beautiful story I've ever been a part of in this company. I'm so proud of it and I got all I wanted not to wrestle in front of you guys. That would have been awesome. That moment where I get punched in the balls and Otis picks up Mandy and they kiss and I'm heartbroken that this is not in front of 80,000 people and it broke my heart because it was the payoff to a long story. Talking to the Associated Press about his future with WWE Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevenson said, I am still doing my thing. I have changed my diet, my body appearance. I want it to be the best thing ever. So when I do go on TV, it was going to be a sight that nobody has seen before. My time is coming and it's coming sooner than a lot of people think. It was previously reported that stardom talent would not be able to make it out for the Forbidden Door event in Canada due to visa issues. Now Sean Ross Appa Fightful is noted, I'm told that the word that most on the stardom roster not having Canadian visas is likely true, but the word that AEW didn't contact stardom about the potential to use their talent on Forbidden Door is absolutely untrue, and there has been contact within the last month. Also, you don't need a visa in this situation. Revealing that he will be having a procedure done on his back, Matt Morgan took to Twitter to write, Please keep me in your prayers, gang. As I go in for back surgery at 6 a.m. in a game of basketball, I dunked it, but when I landed, felt a huge bolt of electricity shoot down my spine all the way down my left leg and foot. Back in 2002, when I first started wrestling, I originally hurt my back. It led me to severe opioid addiction. After being a functioning addict for the early years of my WWE career, I finally got help, and now 17 plus years still sober. But this has been the most excruciating pain I've ever dealt with in my lifetime. I can't take any painkillers for it because I have to maintain my sobriety. I got an epidural, nothing. Then got a nerve block injection that lasted for four hours. And then it got worse after it wore off. Each progressing day, my left foot has gotten more numb. Met with five surgeons, both spinal and neurosurgeons, and were doing a reflex test on my left foot. They said if I don't get surgery ASAP, I will lose all feeling in it. Years later, there was a time when I was wrestling with TNA Impact Wrestling where I set my opponent on a table, Bubba Ray Dudley, on the outside of the ring, and I went to the top rope where I jumped off in a leg drop position, non-wrestling fans, a seated 90 degree position, and the spot called for him to move out of the way while I went through the table, crashing in that 90 degree position right through to the concrete floor on my tailbone. That was the next time I felt that same bolt of electricity and numbness to my left leg. 
I was able to rehab it, get a nerve block injection in my spine to make the pain go away, but I was able to finish off my wrestling career in 2014 virtually pain-free. Since then, I've never had any lower back issues thanks to naturally treating it, but nothing I'm doing is helping, and I have no choice but to now get this surgery. Technically, they wanted me to get this surgery back around 2010 if I remember correctly, but I was adamant about staying away from any kind of surgery because of the horror stories I always heard. While performing my two jobs this week and in the excruciating pain I've been in, I've had to be on a pair of crutches just to take some of the weight off of my left leg to stop that S1 nerve from continuing to cause me crazy pain. So really, I have no choice but this surgery. As per all five surgeons and pain management specialists I've spoken to, I've never had to have a serious surgery in all my life for my wrestling career, or anything else for that matter, which I've always felt very blessed for considering me being 7 feet tall and the majority of my life being over 330 pounds, playing Division One college basketball as well on top of it. That's a lot of stress on the body. So, surgery has been very foreign to me, luckily. But it's also making me 10 times as nervous about this upcoming surgery because of my inexperience in this department. Love you all very much. And any prayers you can send my way that everything goes as perfect as it can to fix this problem in my L5 S1 left leg and left foot, you have no clue how much I would appreciate. Please and thank you again. With him recently making his return to televised pro wrestling in the form of AEW, Sabu said this about having a retirement bout, saying during his signing for Gold and Ring Collectibles, I'd like to have a match with Brock Lesnar though. If it's going to be an actual final match and I'm not going to wrestle no more, I'd like it to be against Brock Lesnar. He'd be my perfect opponent because he does stuff I don't do and I do stuff that he doesn't do. It was previously noted that the XFL has suffered a loss of around $60 million for this year, as the owner of the league, The Rock, responded to this on Twitter. Tried to tell him his whole life, but he's never listened to me. I play the long game in business, and XFL is no exception. We saw some nice successes and took some L's in our first season that we learned from. 75 to 100 XFL players will be competing in NFL camps this fall. That's a big number that will continue to grow season over season. We're in it for the long haul. Step by step building the league of opportunity. Like with any venture, success takes time. Thanks XFL fans for the love and support. Speaking about his relationship with Triple H during his time in WWE, Ryback told K100, I've wanted to like Hunter a lot, and I think early on, a lot of it was very good. He was the one who came up with doing the double stack for the Shell Shock. He used to come up, and we used to have conversations, and I don't know what changed on any of that. It's all a game on how things work. I can tell you, from Hunter's perspective, I think we have a lot in common, and I loved him growing up. We had meetings in Stanford. He helped me a lot early on, brilliant mind with everything, but towards the end, we had some heated conversations with things. I'd go through him before I'd go to Vince. I told him, you're the biggest disappointment in my wrestling career. I grew up loving you, and you're just an effing disappointment. He put his head down and said, please don't say that, but that's how I felt. With a fan suggesting that AEW put on a match between Chris Jericho and Sting, Jericho responded, writing, It'll never happen. Not interested. As she was seen suffering an injury to her ankle at the NJPW Resurgence event, Mercedes Monet posted a health update on social media, noting that it was day six of her recovery following surgery. Seen at an airport, Jeff Hardy was approached by a couple of fans to sign a lot of photos. Here's the video. How you doing, man? How you doing today, bro? My childhood when I was younger, man. Finally, you probably get that all the time.
Thank you so much, man. Up here at this altitude, these pens explode. Oh, we know that. You know a lot about these markers and stuff, so whatever, up here. Push too hard. Thanks, bro. Just come more. Also, can, hey, can I get a photo when I'm done, too? Thank you. Last one. Thank you. Appreciate it. As Drew McIntyre has been in the news recently over his contract status with WWE, this was said by PW Insider. There has been a push within WWE Creative to have McIntyre back into the storyline mix by Money in the Bank weekend in London. Given his status as one of the company's top European stars, that makes the most sense. We are told that there were meetings last week regarding pitches for McIntyre's return, as he hasn't been seen since WrestleMania 39 and was drafted to Monday Night Raw in the weeks after. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.